Me for the first time. Um, there's something they tend to spot a bit about me first. Um, it's, it, apart from the evil hypnotist beard, um, it's this voice. Um, I've got, um, unfortunately, a rather rich, fruity, well-spoken voice that tends to be described as smug twat. Um, <laughs> this voice does me no favours at all, okay? Um, I sound horribly insincere. I sound like a you know badly dubbed foreign film. Uh, when I say to my wife, you know, I love you, she just looks at me weirdly, you know, wonders what I've done. Um, <laughs> but my wife is here tonight. Um, yeah, I'm going to go there. Um, I've screwed the routine. Um, my wife is here tonight, principally because I said I was going to do some stand-up in Stoke, and she just didn't believe me. She thought I was probably having an affair. Um, Actually, my wife did say to me when I started doing some stuff, and so she said, Oh, you can do jokes about how you stack a dishwasher. You know, how you do it like a clown on acid. I went, No. <laughs> I'm going to talk about the dishwasher. I'm going to talk about my rule. My rule in life is very straightforward. If I do a job that you're not satisfied with, and you feel compelled to do it yourself, that's your job for life. If I hang up the washing and you're not satisfied and you feel necessary to rehang that washing, okay, that's your job for life. That's why I don't do the dishwasher, don't do the laundry, and I don't have sex with my wife. <laughs> no, I'm joking. That's not the reason why I don't have sex with my wife. Um, actually, I don't have sex with my wife because I've got this horrible habit of shouting out the names of minor deities during the act. Um, you know, most people at some point during their lives will start shouting, Oh God! during the act of sex. And as an atheist, I felt I realised I can't you know, handle that really. I need to sort of uh, spread it out a bit. So I spent a few months shouting, uh, Praise be to Allah, um, <laughs> at the moment. Um, I'm now on a police watch list. Um, and I mean, it's got to the point now, I think it just reached ahead when I start shouting, Oh, her face just blacksmith to the gods of Olympus! And she'd had enough by that point, really. Um, betraying my uh, classical education there a bit. Because this voice, this voice isn't the natural voice of where I come from, okay? This voice has come from attending a grammar school. I'm from Lincolnshire. Now, Lincolnshire's one of those places where I get that look when I mention it, because you've heard of it, but you're probably thinking, I don't know where it is. And there's two reasons for that in Lincolnshire. A, there is no reason on earth to ever go to Lincolnshire. And B, it's not on the way to anywhere more interesting. <laughs> but then I say to people, oh, I, I come from sort of near Skegness. And then people nod, and they glaze over with the PTSD from a weekend in Butlins they had once. But actually, I'm not really from Skegness. We've like, not been to Skegness, it's kind of like Blackpool, if you bought Blackpool on Wish. Um, I'm from a small town just south of Grimsby. Now, Grimsby's one of those other places. It's got Grim in the name, and so you know half of everything you need to know about it. The other only thing you need to know about it is its two most famous exports are A, Fish Fingers, and B, Beverly Allen the Serial Killer. That's all it's got going for us, okay? That's Grimsby for you. Um, so, I'm from Lincolnshire, that's pretty much straight east from here. He says, not knowing what direction he's pointing in. Which pretty much makes me, thanks, that was handy. Um, which pretty much makes me either a Midlander or a Northerner. But no, I got this voice because I went to grammar school and I had my proper accent beaten out of me by people who would be nice if I sounded a bit like Stephen Fry. Um, I don't have a high opinion of grammar school, to be honest with you. I think what typifies my low opinion of grammar school is every time I go home, my mum says to me, you'll never guess who's been arrested for historical sex offences. <laughs> <laughs> four of them, four of them. Um, we've now got a sweepstake, to be honest. Um, so, I, yeah, I, I, went, I went to grammar school, um, and um, to be honest with you, you know, I, I don't have a high opinion of it, and maybe it is to do with that stuff about, you know, how many of my teachers are now in prison. But then again, maybe at my age, our age, you know, you're going to pick up these stories from your youth anyway. I, I say my age, 
I don't consider myself to be old. I'm not old. But I increasingly feel like a time traveler from the 20th century. I can mystify children with stories of a time when there were three TV channels and two types of cheese. <laughs> Cheddar and Red Leicester. What? No baby bells, Dad? No. Cheddar and Red Leicester. Back in those days, if you made any of those fancy cheeses, your brie or your gruyere, the milk marketing board would come round to your house, kick your door in and waterboard you with UHT. Okay? To be honest with you, it was a strange time. And actually, thinking about schools, teachers got away with a heck of a lot back then. True story. April 1st, 1981, I was in Mrs. Fiddler's class. I was six years old. No, that is her name. I don't think you'd get a job as a teacher with those, that name these days, would you? No, you really wouldn't, no. Not that I'm saying paedophiles advertise by changing their names. Although, you know, if they did, my grammar school teacher, Mr. Touchcock, would have been fired sooner. <laughs> But no, April the 1st, 1981, uh, Mrs. Fiddler's class, and this was the time when we all used to think we're all going to die in a nuclear war. Oh, those times are back again. Um, the, you know, we just, it was everywhere, you know, in, in, in the books, in the TV, in the films. You know, I'm of the age where I watch the uh, charming children's cartoon, don't you seen it, When the Wind Blows. Lovely film of that period, made by the same people who made The Snowman. And so to the end, it's not the snowman who melts, it's the faces of the old people as they die from radiation poisoning. Um, but April the 1st, 1981, Mrs. Fiddler made us all hide under our desks as we're going to be bombed by the Russians. That's what she said to us. Oh, how they laughed. April Fool's Day joke. Bunch of five and six year olds crying under their tables. You know, you wouldn't have anything like that. Actually, I said you wouldn't have anything like that these days. I am a teacher. And in fact, actually, we get the kids to hide under the desk quite frequently now. Um, that's because we have those wonderful lockdown drills. Um, this is true. Lockdown drills, what you do is you lock the classroom door, you hide under your desks, and you pretend you're not there. Now, the kids want to know why we do the lockdown drills, and I can't say to them, well, it's because there might be an angry man with a shotgun and a machete and a vendetta against all women in the school. Um, so I have to lie. So I say, kids, um, we have to do this in case there's a big dog in the school. Or a wolf. <laughs> I might as well just say, you know, we have to have lockdown drills in case, you know, the white, the white walkers come over the wall again. Um, doesn't matter with a voice like mine, no one ever believes a word I say. Anyway, thank you very much. Cheers. <laughs>